Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber from Mystic Eyes of Journey and I am back with another channeled message. So today I'm going to be doing part two of the dragon spirit message. Um, definitely checking in a lot quicker than I thought I would. The other day um, I was sleeping and I saw the energy of the dragon spirit moving through my desk. And it initially freaked me the heck out um, because it was extremely destructive and not in like a violent, negative, aggressive way. The energy is just so big. It reminded me of a bull in a china shop, right? A bull in a china shop is not necessarily an aggressive energy. It's just having a big animal amongst all of these tiny little delicate energies is inevitably destructive. It was so destructive that I actually had to call on my entire spirit team to wrangle this energy in because it was literally, I don't want to curse, but um, effing my ish up energetically because of just the way it wanted to move. And it was a message to me that I have to think bigger. I have to expand. My vision needs to expand to create space for this energy. Now, this is the energy of the year, okay? And this is the energy that's going to be flowing through the collective. So the collective needs to understand at this time, whatever it is that you're manifesting, whatever it is that you're creating, the vision has to expand to make space for this very big energy that is going to be inevitably flowing through it. If your vision is small, it's going to get rocked. <laughs> it's going to get rocked because it moves like this, right? So if your vision is a little tiny house on the prairie, it, You got to make sure there's a big amount of land that you're envisioning with that little house on the prairie, right? This is an energy of expansion. If you're expanding to a new job, maybe you just want to take one step up. No, we need to expand. You need to think bigger. You need to shoot for higher because this energy is going to be a destructive force if we're thinking too small or if we're too small. Okay, so we have to get big. That's the energy that we're going into this with, but I'm gonna go into the tarot. I'm gonna go into um, an oracle deck and just get some more information on what the dragon spirit needs the collective to know at this time. Part two. All right. Dragon spirit, what do you need the collective to know at this time? Um, very surprising when this energy came through my desk it took me a minute to recognize it because the typical um depiction of a dragon is um you know it kind of has like a pointed snout that comes out this way that is not what i saw it was compressed inward kind of similar to what you would see in um chinese new year parades that kind of flat face, but it embodied it like a train. Like think not a not a pointed train, but like a flat train moving like this. <laughs> I almost felt bad when I had to call my spirit team to like handle this energy because it was it was adorable. It was like ooh, what? but. It was rocking my stuff. <laughs> All right, what else? What do we have for the dragon spirit? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> okay. There's something very goofy about this energy as well. Something very goofy. I don't know what it is. But it's making me laugh and it's making me happy. I think it might be an energy to lighten up as well. 
to not take things so seriously. Okay, let's get one more. This is really interesting energy. We have the chariot come out. Um, okay, wow. Back of the deck. King of Swords in reverse. Okay, yeah, definitely an energy about lightening up a little bit. Not being so serious. The Emperor in reverse. Again, not being so serious. We have the chariot here. And that chariot came out while I was... Um, giving you a description of what I saw and how the face kind of reminded me of a train for some reason. Um, in the first video, we talked about the dragon being a vehicle, something that moves or transports energy, maybe even in souls, people, I'm not really sure. Um, but anyway, let's get straight into it. We have the justice card, karma, bringing things into balance, balancing out situations. Knight of Wands. This is kind of that impulsive, fast-moving energy. We have the Devil in Reverse, letting go of illusions, releasing illusions, creating some kind of clarity and detachment. Uh, we also have the Two of Wands. This is an energy about re- kind of structuring, re-establishing our vision. Mm, okay, I know where this is going. Chariot moving forward. The Emperor letting go of control, lightening up. Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing that I'm getting is don't get too attached to what your vision is. So if you plan something out, I'm getting that we should be a little bit more broad so that we're not disappointed. Because with this Devil card, I feel like a lot of the collective, as we're, as we're planning, as we're creating our vision and what we're going to create going into the next year, um, number one, we're being a little limited, right? And that might be because of cultural beliefs, um, societal beliefs, uh, any type of projected beliefs that are, you know, toxic to this idea of expansion. Um, but yeah, there's an illusion around, a collective illusion around how big we can make something. And Dragon Spirit is saying that you don't necessarily have to get bigger, but get at least get broader. Okay, so it might be that you want this particular job. Get broader. Let yourself be more open. Yes, okay, so the way this dragon moves, this large energy that kind of swishes from side to side, right? We don't necessarily have to make our vision bigger, but if we can make it wider, cast out a wider net so that spirit can bring things in in a way that's way more effortless, um, it's going to be easier, right? It's going to be a lot less destructive, right? Because there is a destructive element when it comes to the devil card reversed, when we're releasing chains, breaking chains. Yeah, the emperor is kind of this closed, narrow-minded energy, right? Even the emperor in general, he, he kind of seems narrow, a little skinny mini, right? I know he's robed, but there is just this energy of compact and confined, and we're being asked to step out of that energy and get wide, get big. Yeah. Now, the justice is asking us to bring something into balance. Something. Let's clarify that. I want to clarify that because I wanted to say something was not fair. Now, that could be the case. So interesting here. We had the, um, the king of swords here with the emperor. I just want to show you this real quick. I'm getting this. King of Swords plus Emperor equals Justice. <laughs> Not sure what that means. King of Swords plus Emperor equals Justice. And both of these energies came out in reverse. So there's this element of not being so serious. Releasing control is what's going to bring balance into the situation. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So it's really important that as we step further in, to this year, to this journey, we have to lighten up a little bit. 
be a little less controlling. I know that manifestation work is a little bit masculine in, in general, right? We want to go for it. We want to go and get it, but we're being asked to kind of pull it back and chill, right? Because the chariot is about moving forward, moving quickly towards what it is that we want. But the chariot is cancer energy, which is really, that's always been so interesting to me. You know, cancer energy is obviously a very, very feminine energy. It's the mother of the zodiac. Yet it's about rapid, quick movement. Now, I want to move over here to the devil card. Now, look at this energy. It's, it's mirrored energy, right? We have the Baphomet, who is connected to these two people in order to do its bidding, to um, move forward its agenda, right? It's agenda about uh, passion and luxury or whatever it is, you know? But then we have this man here on the chariot connected to these two sphinx that represent ancient and divine wisdom and balancing of masculine and feminine energies. And he uses this energy to move its agenda forward. Right here, it's toxic, right? It even came in reverse. But here, it's in the upright and we have this illuminated sun energy in the background, solar plexus energy in the background, personal power. So I feel like there is this element where the collective needs to take back its personal power, come into the light, introduce the sun, this carefree energy, right? We also have this sun energy in the upright justice card. Mm, okay, so we need to lighten up. We need to lighten up if we want to move forward. If we don't lighten up, if we stay in this King of Swords, this Emperor energy, rigid, fixed, we're going to stay exactly where we're going to stay, right? They're, <laughs> they're stuck on this post. They're not going anywhere, right? But the chariot is going forward. So we need to widen. We need to lighten up. <laughs> now we have the Seven of Pentacles here. Right? Planting the seeds and just waiting. This is also an energy of impatience I'm picking up today. There's an impatience. That may be where this Emperor and King of Swords energy is coming in. Also, this Knight of Wands wanting to move forward with Gusto. I don't know why I said it that way. This is like silly. This is silly. I feel like the Dragon Spirit is encouraging us to get silly and... And have fun with what it is that we're creating. I definitely need that message. <clears throat> I'm part of the collective too. All right, we got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, so we have the Seven and the Eight of Pentacles. This is an energy of keeping yourself busy. Planting the seeds but continuing with your work, which is interesting. Right, Eight of Pentacles is an energy of mastery. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. And I'm also getting a lot of us in the collective may be hyper fixated on the end goal and not so much on the journey. Okay, with this Ten of Pentacles in reverse, obviously, if we're in the sequence of Seven of Pentacles to Eight of Pentacles, we're ending at the Ten of Pentacles. But this energy is in reverse, right? I feel like a lot of us are manifesting negative energy towards our intentions because we're so fixated on the end result or so fixated on the financial or the money aspect of what it is that we're bringing in. We need to tap into or we need to balance we need to tap into the fun, right? Um, Knight of Wands is a fun energy. It's a spontaneous energy, right? It's moving forward. It's moving forward quickly, but it's having fun while it does it. And also look at the way the horse is leaping. This is an energy of lightening up because we have the armor of the emperor, right? It's still a heavy energy, but there's something lighthearted about it. Let's get one more. Don't focus on the end goal. Focus on mastery, on mastering what it is that you're doing or creating. So the practice of it, 
right? Think of like a yoga practice. You don't hop on your mat and all of a sudden you're just like the best yogi ever. No, it's a practice. There's that understanding. You keep showing up for yourself day after day, time after time, and gradually your practice improves. It's not about looking into the future and being like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this amazing headstand and that's what all of this is for. No, we understand that a yoga practice is about the journey. Whatever it is that you're doing is about the journey, right? It's about the journey. It's about mastering something. Ooh, okay, that was interesting. King of, or Queen of Cups just flung out in the most beautiful way directly on top of the Knight of Wands, right? That's that carefree energy that we're picking up on. Queen of Cups is also love, right? It's the loveliest love card, I think, in tarot as far as the courts go. Uh, this is feminine on feminine energy. Okay, so I feel like we're wanting to have fun within our relationships, within our connections. So if you have children, tapping into your inner child, hanging out with your kids, doing fun things with your children... If that's not the case, just kind of move into this more, uh, yeah, carefree energy. I wanted to say tap into your inner child, but I'm not getting inner child. I'm getting like inner teenager. <laughs> so I don't know what you were like as a teenager, but that's a little scary to me when I think about that. But that's also an area of my life that I need to heal. So maybe it would be a good thing to step into that energy. Right, we have the Ten of Swords that landed on top of the Chariot. That's interesting. I want to clarify that. Uh, Ten of Swords, an ending that might be painful. Okay. I feel like the collective is healing something right now. So if you're experiencing delays in what it is that you're creating, um, yeah, if you're experiencing delays in what it is that you're creating, it may have to do with this healing or tying up loose ends in an ending, right? The moon card is an energy of deep emotion. So I feel like there is some sort of emotional element to what's happening here. And it has to do with some sort of a healing process. We have the king of pentacles. We might be talking about a Virgo, Capricorn, a Taurus person outside of yourself. But for a lot of you, I feel like you are embodying this king of pentacles, stepping into this energy of abundance because we had a lot of pentacle cards here at the top of the spread, right? The seven, the eight, and the 10 in reverse. We're stepping into grounding our manifestation, creating a material abundance, but being too focused on the abundant part of it. Mm, okay, I need one more for this Ten of Swords. I feel like there's a little bit more in there. What is that? Dragon Spirit, what is that? Tell me more about this Ten of Swords with the um, King of Pentacles. Yeah, okay. Nine of Wands, the Wounded Warrior having to retreat after being hit with a lot of stuff. But this energy is in reverse. Mm, okay, back of the deck is the High Priestess. This is lack of trust. Lack of trust in self. Yeah, okay. Let me clear this away because this is its own message. And Dragon Spirit is coming through with the collective to acknowledge some sort of difficult ending that you've just been through. Now, this difficult ending was absolutely necessary in order for you to step into this King of Pentacles, this mastery of the abundant material realm. Right? I feel like a lot of you are manifesting something that is physical, tangible, and is connected to a lot of money or a large house or a large purchase or something really significant materially. But in order for you to step into this energy, you had to experience a difficult ending. And I'm connecting this to the, I'm connecting this to the cancer energy. 
So this may have been a difficult ending within um, your home situation, your current home situation, a past home situation, um, a family situation. There was some sort of a difficult ending that happened there. And I want to go back to this devil card now. I'm being pulled there as well. Um, because we linked the chariot to the devil. Yeah, we're shifting out of this devil energy and moving into the chariot so that we can move forward. That's what this is, releasing this devil, this toxic energy. And it was very painful. Dragon Spirit is acknowledging that. We're not fully healed out of this energy, right? Because I'm getting two messages here with this Nine of Wands in reverse. Number one, we need to stay in this energy a little bit longer for some of you. For some of you, it's time to get out of this energy. It's time to drop the shields, to drop the defenses because you don't need it anymore. Okay, that message is for most of the people that are gonna be tapping into this energy. It's time to drop the defenses. It's trying to drop this energy layer of protection you have around yourself because it is stalling the chariot it's stalling the ability to move forward and it's creating this haziness with your ability to connect with your intuition with the high priestess reversed fear of whatever this was whatever this was is causing some glitches within your intuition you're getting messages and downloads that are coming through from a place of fear and defensiveness rather than your actual intuition. So there is some healing that still needs to happen in that area. Let's get one more. Yeah, 10 of cups. So I, I really feel like for a lot of you, this was a family situation, but this is also a reminder that you do have a positive community around you, or perhaps that's what you're, ooh, okay. Yes, you have a positive community around you, but we are mirroring again this 10 of pentacles that came out in the reverse. It's like, okay, we're too hyper-focused on the 10 of pentacles, and we need to instead focus on the 10 of cups. That's what's going to get us moving and that's what's going to heal us, not the money that's going to come from whatever it is that we're creating. It's the fulfillment. It's the love. It's the freedom. It's the ability to connect with your family. To connect with your love, to have your happily ever after. That should be your motivation and your focus moving forward not the money that comes with it. This will come inevitably. That can't be the focus. That's keeping us in the devil energy. Shift our focus to the Ten of Cups fulfillment. Okay, let's go into Oracle and we'll wrap it up. Been going for a long time. Last message is from Dragon Spirit. Oh, let's get one more. That wanted to come out. I guess we're doing three. <laughs> All right. Igniting my joy. Yeah. Lightening up. Attuning to the highest good in myself and others ignites my natural joy. Yeah. All of that beautiful sun energy. Let's lighten up. Let's have some fun. Let's get into that night of wands energy. Let's get goofy. I'm like seeing actually the character Goofy now. Divine patience. My soul brings forth the right conditions and opportunities for me. The best answers and solutions are delivered at the best times. Okay. Yeah, so whatever it is that you're creating, it's coming in. Absolutely coming in. Just be patient. Four six is ten. Completion. We have the two tens. You will manifest the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. It is inevitable. It's just a matter of patience. Um, igniting my joy, 15, breaks down to the number six. I believe 15 is also the devil card. If Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but it breaks down to six, which is about reciprocity, give and take. Right? We're going to start attracting things in 
as we lighten into this energy or this vibration of joy. Embracing change. Okay. Four, three brings us to seven. Okay. Spiritual energy. We have the dolphins in the background here, which is an energy of joy. It's also a love energy. With every loss, I understand that something new is about to be birthed beyond what I can imagine. Yeah, so we're going to get some shifts. We're going to get some forward movement here, collective, for sure. Right? Whatever that Ten of Swords was, whatever that ending is, it's ushering in something new, something better. Ten of Cups energy, for sure, with these dolphins here. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much. If this resonated with you, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you're interested in personal private readings. That information is in the description box below. And until we meet again, namaste.